Welcome to this edition of MJ All Day. I'm your host, Deanna. Today, we're going to talk with David Winans. He has a PhD in Pampers because he raised all of the other Winans, as well as a special guest called Whitney Houston. So we're going to talk to him about his family, as well as how he got involved with MJ in the making of Man in the Mirror along with some other inside stories. It's a great interview, check it out. So you have a, a last name that's so recognizable. How does that feel to- Well, I, it, it's weird to me because I swear when I used to get mail when I was in Los Angeles, no one could pronounce my name correctly. They'd say, Wininski. I'm like, there's no S-K-I at the end of that. Right. They go, Weiner, there's no R in it. And a lot of women's, but um, it's Winans with the I being long. And so after the brothers made their mark, I guess everybody learned how to pronounce it correctly. Yeah, it was like, you know, I'm from uh, Detroit, and I don't know who did not know how to pronounce that name. <laughs> and, and, you know, well, and, you know, being from Detroit, you did. In L.A., they had no idea at the time when I got there. Yeah, but you came, we were talking earlier, so explain when you got here, because you kind of, you came during all the good times. Yes, I believe they were good times. Looking back on it, they were great. Um, when I initially got out to Los Angeles, um, it was still, the old L.A. was still there, as far as the hippie culture. Mm -hmm. um, Laurel Canyon was there i think zappa frank zappa and all the old clubs like 77 sunset strip uh dean martin's club steros was there all this was the strip uh -huh. and i just saw something that reminded me of that i was watching um sammy davis jr i was just watching sammy davis jr documentary oh, okay. and he he played at these clubs like steros dean martin's club and all those things were still there i I'm not even sure if there was a Tower of Records, but something had to be there. But that whole Sunset Strip was old Hollywood, and it was changing or being changed at the time I was there. And so I came in at probably the tail end of the folk era where Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young and all those people yes. were uh, playing at the Whiskey and the Go-Go Clubs that were there at the time. Yeah, because Whiskey Go Go, that's still there. And uh, like that whole row of clubs that, yeah, yeah, it's like everybody fights to get into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there also was a club next to the Whiskey, or a little further left going towards the beach of Sunset, there was a club called Ben Gazzaris. Ben Gazzaris. Uh huh. Sorry. And Ben Gazzari's was a club, I think it was like one of those dance clubs that used to be on TV, like Hullabaloo, where the girls would get up and dance with go, go boots and stuff like oh, that. Oh, okay, uh-huh. I don't know if Ben Gazzari's is still there, but... Um, I don't know either. I just know I have seen, like I saw the sign for Whiskey Go-Go, and uh, they have the like... The Troubadour is still there, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's still there. The whiskey, I, the Roxy, and the yeah, Rainbow. Yeah, the Roxy is still there. Um, I, I'm the sure Rainbow. probably the Rainbow. I, I don't remember seeing that necessarily. And right next door to the Roxy. People go to eat there a lot more. Oh, yeah. Maybe I Rainbow just passed Martin that. Grill. Oh, actually, yeah. I think, I, I think that is still there because I saw people inside uh, eating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, you still remember all these, you know, places, and you give me places to go, because I'm like, oh, yeah. really? Wow. Because you were here when, uh, what was it, the Brown Derby, and then they ha yeah. had, had, uh, palace. huh? The Hollywood Palace. Yep, the Hollywood Palace, and then the uh, Frank and Musso's is still here. Frank and Musso's, okay, of yeah, course. They're still, <laughs> they're still here, um, so yeah. So um, during that time, as a, when you came out, were you uh, doing music then, or did you just come out kind of to, to have a change of scenery? Well, I came out there, I was doing music back home. Mm -hmm. And like I said, when I came back from London, I had a job here at Cobo Hall. Do you know what Cobo Hall is? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Well, I used to work at Cobo Hall while I was in high school, and I was an usher there. Mm -hmm. So whenever bands came to Cobo Hall and 
they had enough ushers, I got to stay and listen to the music for free. Oh, wow. So I'm out of my house, which was strictly gospel, and all the British groups I met through working at Cobo Hall. So I met people like Ian Anderson and Jethro Tull. Mm-hmm. I met all the members of Yes. I met uh, Jeff Beck, Edgar Winter, and these groups who I marveled at because I was a guitarist at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, I became friends with. Wow. So outside of like learning all the anthology of all the rock, rock bands, mm-hmm. I was enthralled by the people I met through that job. And the friendships continued when I moved out to Los Angeles. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, I thought that was cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I mean, I mean, because I know where Co- uh, Cobo Hall is. I've done interviews with uh, people there who come in town, uh-huh. but... Um, wow, it's really uh, rare to have that kind of connection with a person that it carries, you know, when you, you move away. So that's why I was like, yeah. wow. Um, yeah, I also have was friends with a band called Gentle Giant. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember one time, Yes was playing at the forum, and John Anderson told me to come down to the show. <laughs> and so I took some friends of mine down to meet John Anderson at at when they were playing i think the album was going for the one at the time oh wow so you you were the man with the hookup yeah (laughs) (laughs) so after being here a while did you like how was it uh getting a gig so to speak or you know was it easy like just somebody calls you up and hey we need a bass player come on bring it down or or uh, did you really have to it wasn't like that it wasn't um being a musician in Los Angeles is kind of hard as compo- as compared to, which is really weird in mm-hmm. a sense because Motown being Motown, full of musicians here. Right. But they have a unions list, musicians union. I was anti-union because I had my own band. So I wasn't like a session player. Right. So when you get to sessions, you're on a list in Los Angeles, Chick Korea. Uh, you know, people of that ilk. Uh huh. Stanley Clark, and you're not getting that gig. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Um, who else was like, the session people were Toto, everybody in Toto. Oh, wow. Uh, it was David Pack's band. I forgot the name. Ambrosia was another session there. And so I came back home. I had a band here after I got the layout of Los Angeles. So I came back home and put some people together from here and went out to L.A. because I met some gentlemen that were interested in my music. Because I had gone out to shop my brothers. Oh, okay. And I went to all the gospel people there, and they turned it down. I said, you guys are making a mistake. And and next year, they were all at the Grammys when my brothers won the Grammys for their first album. And I said, I told you so. So that was a pick. Oh, I I love that you got to say I told you so. Yeah. (laughs) Or got right. to see their face when your brothers went up and and yeah. uh, won the Grammy. So when you had your group, were you also doing gospel or had you branched no, out or were you doing I was uh, other music? Progressive rock. I was. I think Andre Crouch was out there because Andre was was booming at that time too. Mm-hmm. But no, I was strictly. I would call my stuff. I had a band called Zaria, which is X A I R I A. I kind of. I kind of uh, customized the word aria from an opera, which is an operatic solo. Right, yes. And I added an I to it to make it area. And the X was X for Christmas, X for Christ, like in Christmas. Yes. So it was Zaria was the name of the band. And we, you had to get your own gig. There was a lot of Viper managers out there. And the radio stations were geared towards local bands at that time. Mm -hmm. But the punk movement was there also. So like I was saying earlier to you, I believe, um, bands like the Go-Go's. Yes. There was a a rehearsal studio on Western and Melrose. And it was called uh, West Hollywood Studios, something like that. A gentleman by the name of Wendell ran it. And... We used to rehearse upstairs, and right next to us were the Go-Go's, oh, Shalomar, wow. band called X, and some other bands. And out of that group of people, 
everybody got signed except my band, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> but I remember vividly Brenda Carlisle coming to audition for the Go-Go's. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. yeah. So um, that was, it was very, very interesting times there. And the clubs would have, like, the Troubadour, they'd have, like, three or four bands on it every every day, I, I do believe. And for you to get that spot, you'd have to, like, and we all worked. Um, most of my members, we worked at Universal Nissan. Really? Okay. Yeah. So selling cars? And, no, we were driving driving parts. Oh, okay. None of us, we weren't salesmen. <laughs> we would drive parts, and we'd have to like be at work at seven in the morning or something like that, and then do a gig on Monday or Tuesday and be there until two or three in the morning. Oh, wow! And then be at work the next day. So we were troopers. Yeah, you're but serious. That was the scale of it, and um, I remember we you had to work you had to work twenty four seven to try and get a date at one of these clubs. And we finally landed the Troubadour, and the band that opened up for us was Berlin. No, really? Yeah. Oh, so wow. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing I know, Berlin had that song, and um, what's, uh, what's the name of their hit song? I was I trying think to think of it. Um... Was it an, a Top Gun or Officer? In, yeah, one I think those? it was one of the two. Um <laughs> I can't think of it, but I hear it in my head, and I, I can't think. I, I want to say it's Top Gun, but yeah, um, yeah okay. So I'll, I'll look it up and, and make sure I, I put it in the in the exactly. podcast because I know yeah. people. Because when you said the name, I was like, oh wow! Like I've really, yeah. really been saying that about it all because I know the Shalimar, I knew the Go, you know, the Go Go's, those groups. So I know the names that you're calling out, right? And Madam X was another band. I think X Zane was in Madam X at one time. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there was a club in the valley called FM Station. Oh, okay. Which was on the corner of Lancashire and Victory. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. And it was called FM was Station. Club, there was a club adjacent to that called LJ's. HJ's, I'm sorry, HJ's. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, her name is Christy Love. Christy Love is a friend of mine from high school. She went to Cooley here in Detroit. Oh, wow. Okay. And I ran into her at the whiskey one night mm -hmm. and we rekindled our relationship, our friendship. And uh, Christy was dating Buddy Miles, I think, at that time. So Buddy Miles is how I got to see Van Halen finally. Oh, wow. Uh, we, I'm jumping all over the place, I think. Well, I mean, in a good way, because it's still, uh -huh. I mean... This is the good time, like you're in the golden time when it when uh, when music was like really hot back then, and like all of these bands that you're and people that you're naming, they're like the top, the best of the best in their respective um, uh, fields. So it's just like you're walking down the street, and and everybody is like top tier talent. Almost, you know, yes. before, but before they know their top tier talent, you know, because everybody's still trying to make it. So. Yeah, we're all trying to make it. Let's see. Joan was still in the Go Go's. Joan Jett was still in the right. Go Go's. Oh, wow. no, I mean, I'm sorry. Joan was in the Runaways. The in Runaways, the yeah. The Runaways. Joan and Lita Ford. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you, and you knew all of those bands. Yeah. Oh, literally. wow. Molly Crew was another one. Nikki Six. Mm hmm. Um, Jimmy Cricket. Uh, I forgot who Carlo Cusbaso used to play with, but yeah, it was a bunch of a bunch of us running around a month. <laughs> they let you guys loose in L.A. So Los Angeles. All right. You have to see the movie Dirt. I think that's the name of it. Dirt, the Molly Crew story. Yes, that's very <laughs> that kind of pins lets you know what was going on at that time. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, okay, because I saw, um, I want to say Axel Rose or somebody did a documentary or something. And Axel was Guns N' Roses. Yeah, it was Guns N' Roses. And I think he did some kind of, of documentary and, and it, 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 was, it looked wild. So I can only yeah. imagine. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm I can sure only imagine. So how did you get to the point where... 
um, you were playing uh, for Michael Jackson. Okay, what happened on that was I was I was at home, I think, and I'm trying to pinpoint the date. I do remember there was a boxing match. I think it was Sugar Ray Leonard versus Tommy Hearns when that happened. My dad calls me and says, hey, your brothers are coming out to L.A. I was living at the time in North Hollywood. Right. And I'm like, they are? I'm like, why? He said, well, they're, they're getting picked up. They're coming out to scene with Michael Jackson. I said, get out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> because that would have been, I, that just coming out of my dad's mouth was really strange. Mm-hmm. But what had happened was my brothers were on light records initially. And when they came here, they had to come out to L.A. I kept telling them, you got to come out to Los Angeles. They didn't want to move out there at the time. Mm-hmm. So they came out and they called me and um, said they were doing Michael's new album, which was bad. Right. Uh, so I met them at the studio. Now I had followed Michael. Um before, especially after Beat It, because Eddie had played on Beat It. Okay. And I was telling this to someone else, though. Anyhow, um, <laughs> when I got to the studio, I knew Michael had been going around to the local clubs, such as the whiskey and the things we talked about earlier, those clubs. Right. And he would look at the local talent. And so Michael had done Beat It, and Eddie had played on it. Mm-hmm. So um, they told me the studio at the same day they were going in the studio to do Man in the Mirror. BB and CC had just got signed to Capitol Records. Mm -hmm. So I left their dinner and went to the studio, Westlake, and I'm sitting there with Michael, Saida, and Quincy. And Quincy's like, has the sheet music out on the board, and I'm just blown away by him, just being able to look down and make changes on the sheet music. And we started talking about um, how how he got beaten because I wanted to know how the heck did Eddie get on that album? <laughs> right. Michael had just came in. He was standing there. We talked for a minute, and then he disappeared. Michael had Michael could disappear in a split second. If you blinked, he was gone. Then if you open your eyes, he was there, probably in a new outfit. <laughs> what? <laughs> so Michael had just taken off and. So I'm talking to Quincy and I'm asking him, how did he get Eddie on this album? And he said he went down the list of musicians and he saw the man named Van Halen. And he recognized that because Eddie's father had played clarinet with Quincy Jones in his jazz group. Oh, wow. So with Michael's knowledge of local bands, that's how that came to happen. Oh, wow. So while I'm sitting here, I'm trying to think, how can I get on this album? I wanted to play guitar on this album. Mm-hmm. So I asked Mr. Jones, I said, Pew, um, who's playing guitar on this? He said, well, I'm getting this guy named Stevie Stevens. And I went, oh, darn it. So I missed my opportunity there. Mm-hmm. Stevie Stevens was the guitar player for Billy Idol. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's, so Stevie came in to play on Dirty Diana. Yes. That's almost my name, so that's why I said it yeah. like that. Which is cool, and I love the part that he made. He, he paid homage to Eddie with that one riff that Eddie did and beat it. Mm-hmm. That's also in Dirty Diana. Oh, wow. I have to listen to it again to listen for that. Uh, you'll hear it when you when you go back to it this time. Uh-huh. So that's how that happened. And I was just in awe of Michael. And I actually had some footage. I used my brother Michael's, my brother Michael's VCR, video camera at that time. This big movie. It was gigantic, <laughs> looking at how cameras and stuff is now. Right. Uh, you can use it was phone. like something to lug around. But I had a lot of footage from that, and I lost it. No. But basically, I had Saida's legs and Michael on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you had the and real good you, footage. Have you talked to Miss Garrett Yep. Saida? No, I have not uh, talked to her. I would love to, but I haven't talked to her yet. You have to find her. Yes. Yes, I'll have to find her. So, yeah, that's how that happened with Man in the Mirror. I had my daughter with me. And another thing about Michael, my my late wife, her name was Deborah Caduto. Mm-hmm. Uh, she kept telling me she grew up with the Jacksons and all that stuff. And I didn't believe her. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, she's just saying this. She said, no, no, no. So um, 
when we went to the Michael Jackson session, she could she didn't make it. Uh-huh. So I'm thinking she failed. You know, I'm thinking that. Then um, later on, my brothers were doing uh, at Universal Studios, which used to be where it was Universal Studios, but it was called the Amphitheater was there at the time. It's no longer there. Okay. Universal Amphitheater. Okay, and, yeah, I've heard of that. Uh, a lot of concerts were there. Mm-hmm. And so we were playing there, and I was, we were there with some soap opera people. And we went to the backstage, and Randy saw my wife and said, Auntie Debbie! And they hugged. I said, oh, so you was real. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to eat crow. Yeah, for real. Uh-huh. He, was happy. he was happy. Randy was really happy to see Debbie. Oh, and he okay. said, oh, my God, you married to a wife. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you got to eat crow big time. Big time. Big time. Yep. Um, so going back to uh doing man uh man in the mirror, did you did you um have anything to do with the writing? How like did, were you there when they developed the song? Like how did they get the idea for the song? No, I came in with Saida had yes, yeah, Saida was fine tuning part of the song. So my brothers were doing the background. I'm talking about right. man in the mirror. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Change your ways. No message could have been any clearer. If you want to see the da, 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 that part. Mm-hmm. So they recorded that. Um and then that year at the Grammys, which were in New York. Mm-hmm. Michael wanted my brothers to do that again with him on stage. But because of, we'll say, religious factors at the time, they didn't like the way Michael grabbed his crotch and all Mm -hmm. that stuff. You know, I'm like, are you nuts? They turned it down. So Andre Crouch did the live performance at the Grammys. What? Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Little known fact. Yeah, that, that yeah, you you like Andre's also that Andre Crouch's band music uh, choir is also on the background of Man in the Mirror. Oh, okay. So did you um play on any of his other um No, I projects? did not I did not have a chance to play on anything else of Michael's. But I did get called. You this did is like how crazy things is. Uh David Williams David Wilson was the guitarist with Michael. Uh huh. And my brother, Mike, my brother Michael called me and said, David's trying to get in touch with you. Call him. So he called me to go out and do the tour, the oh. Michael's the 50th thing. Right. When he, right when he, before he passed. Right. So um, that never came to fruition. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think Jennifer Baton, uh, she got. She was called to do it too. So, yeah, because was she the one actually in the video? I think. Yeah, uh, she playing. was. Yeah, okay. Jennifer is in Los Angeles. I think she's living in LA. I saw her the last time I was out there. Um, oh. She was doing a show at the. What was her show? I think it was at the Troupe. Okay. She does a one one woman guitar show. Oh wow! Okay. I'll I'll look her up. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's um it's really interesting because I've talked to so many people um, who have met him like in different uh, Michael Jackson different ways and um, know him from different places and it's always interesting to hear um, you know hear about him as a person and just uh, hear about oh. his work ethic like when you're working with him what he's like. Oh, he's dead serious with his work. But very, he was very warming, warm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he laughed a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, he just had, he just had a work ethic. They, there was a, anybody tell you about his nickname? No. <laughs> What's his nickname? They used to call him Smelly. Smelly. Smelly, yes. And I went, I asked Q about that. I said, why are y'all calling him Smelly? He said, because he's squeaky clean. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Smelly. Yeah. Because he's squeaky clean. Yep. 
Oh, wow. I thought, they, you know, the opposite of stinking, he was squeaky clean, so. Yeah. That was, yeah. That's really funny. And he also, when he was stinging, doing his uh, tracks for uh, Man in the Mirror, he was holding my daughter. My daughter's name is Seven. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, he kept going, oh, Seven, oh, my God, what a pretty name. That means perfect. I'm like, oh, it did? <laughs> I just thought it was a cool name. <laughs> <laughs> Little did you know it was yeah. perfect. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, yeah, so he, that's what they always say, that he, he loves kids. That's yes. a special, yeah. a special uh, memory to have. And you lost the footage. I lost the footage of, yes. Yeah. Crazy. Did I Actually, bring that up? I, I, brought, I loaned it to my brother, Michael. Uh-huh. And... <laughs> He loaned it to their, my brother's manager at the time, who was Barry Hankerson. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know that name. So. I know that name, and yes. Barry, either might still have it, because I thought it was going to be great since when Michael passed. I said, oh, my God, I have this footage of him. Right. And I wanted to look at it. And I called my brother, and he said, oh, I gave it to Barry. I said, get out of Dodge. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's what happened with that. Oh, hopefully he he hears this and gets it back to you, and he still has it, because that yeah. that's amazing. Yes, that's yeah, amazing, sure is. especially for you know for your daughter to look mm -hmm. back and be able to see that. That'll be amazing. Um, yeah. So, but you know, he's not the only super duper celebrity that that. Uh, you've been in contact with because I heard that you are where your family is very good friends or was very good friends with Whitney Houston. Oh, good old Nippy. Yeah. Yes. 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 Whitney was great too. Um, I missed her. I had a lot of fun with Whitney. Uh, we were on tour once. Whitney, I don't know if you knew this, Whitney sang background for BB and CC on yes. one of their tours. Yes. I heard like. You know, I've heard so many stories, but what I've always heard, and you can confirm this or not, was that she was unofficially, officially a whinings. Yes, that's true. That is true. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's what I've always heard. Like, she's unofficially, officially a whinings. And I heard that your mom gives these looks like, you better get it together. And that when she gave that look, like, good old Whitney knew, step in line, just like, like oh, the yeah. rest of you guys. That's true. Um, God bless her. Um, yeah, absolutely. I missed Whitney when she came back here to Detroit to do Sparkle. Uh-huh, yeah. And I didn't even know she was in town. A friend of mine who was auditioning for that part called me and said, Dude, I'm doing this thing with Whitney Houston. I said, Whitney? I said, she's here. He goes, yeah. I said, dude, tell her to call me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he got that message to her or he never had another scene with her. Mm -hmm. But after that, I know she had left town and gone back to L.A. So another friend of mine who was like in charge of music at Hollywood Records had gone to the Grammys that year. Mm -hmm. And that's when uh, he called and told me that Tony Bennett had come. They had started the ceremony and Tony Bennett had come on and said, we've lost another one. And. He was referring to Whitney. She had OD'd upstairs in the hotel because right. it was at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Right. So, yeah, um, miss her. I have very fond memories of her in New York. She came to see us at the Beacon Theater. Mm -hmm. And this was before she married Bobby. <laughs> and I was kidding with her because her dad didn't want her to marry Bobby. Mm -hmm. And I said, Whitney, you don't have to do it. And I'll divorce Debbie. And we could get married. She started cracking up. <laughs> right. Like, David, you're crazy. I said, no, you really are. My wife said I could, she, she would mind. <laughs> <laughs> she said, go ahead, right? Yeah, but we lost a great talent there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah without yeah. a doubt. Michael's gone, friends. Yeah, what I find, what I'm finding in doing these interviews about um, Michael and, and what I've heard, uh, all along with Whitney is that these were genuinely good people, like genuinely yeah. nice and humble people. Um, yes, cause I've, are. I've heard like amazing stories about them both and just being like, just regular, even though, you know, a lot of people put them on a pedestal and, 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 um, 
you know, tried to treat them like they weren't regular. They, you know, for some reason they had this ability to just be okay. Like just, you know, be a regular person and not let it go to their heads. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Michael just had to be more sheltered because he was very recognizable and all uh, the years accumulated, the fans he had accumulated over the years since he was in the Jackson five, Right. that can be overwhelming because he's highly recognizable and people will just, they're, you know, they don't mean it to be invading your territory. But when you have a private time and you're somewhere where you think nobody knows you and all of a sudden mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't have that downtime. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that's a hard thing to, the hard thing to balance and still stay as you, you know, a compassionate, regular, average human being. And, um, yeah, that's why I, I thought you would have an interesting perspective because your family is a large family like his and like his, uh, you guys did very well. Like, you know, each, like you said, you have the BBCC, they did their thing. Then you have the other brothers who did their thing and you were out here yeah. doing your thing. So everybody kind of, it, it's like, uh, they call them the, the Voltron, how everybody breaks off and does their thing and then yeah. they come back together. <laughs> Yeah, they like come back together like superheroes and and um it's one, you know, the name um, you know, uh the wineness is um is the name that's out there, but you're always representing it in the pressure of that. Yeah, um, well, us we us growing up, we had like five different ver- five different versions in the family. Mm-hmm. Um, the f- first four, well, when I was with the first four with Marvin, Carvin, and Ronald, we were the wine and airs. We were a quartet group. Oh, cool. Yeah. And <laughs> then I went off. They, they became the testimonial singers. I had gone out to do my thing. And uh, the testimonial singers added a person named Howard Smith to the group. Oh, and cool. then within that group, they became the wine. And, and then Howard left. And Michael came up to join the Winans. He really didn't want to do that because he was in another group, which was called Daniel Winans in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel had Angie, Debbie, Vicky, Marvin's ex-wife mm-hmm. in his group. And that was BB in that? No, BB and Cece had gone on to do PTL. Okay. If you remember that. PTL uh-huh. was Tammy and Faye Baker. Right, yeah, I remember that. So... Yeah, we all, and then mom and dad had their own thing too. Right. So it kind of got, um, yeah, we had like, like four or five different factions in the family. Yeah, that, that's like the, the Voltron, you have the different different right. groups parts. and then you, you all, yeah, different parts and then you all uh, came together. And then somewhere in between there, uh, I've heard like Whitney was sing. I think, uh, didn't she sing with, yeah, you said like your brother and sister at some point, and yeah. Staying back on with BB and CC when they went on tour after they did uh, what was their album? The one with Addicted Love. Oh. Uh, after they did Heaven, because I think Whitney sang on that too. Then and, um, I think Debbie and Angie did something with Whitney in New York. They were in a play. Yeah, but didn't they also tour with her? Yes. As well, I mean, yeah. Oh, Debbie and Angie. Yes. I think they did a couple of dates. I don't know if they did outright tour. Um, okay. Because a whole lot of things were happening at that time with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And then we finally were able to put a family tour together. Oh, wow. Let's see. Daniel won a Grammy for Brotherly Love. Um, CC had... Well, a lot of people thought BB and CC were married. So that was really crazy, too. <laughs> right. At, yeah, at first... A lot of people did. <laughs> I have to admit it. I didn't know. Right. Yeah. No, but the order is I'm the eldest. He yeah, the eldest. I noticed. My mom had seven boys in a row. And then three girls. Cece's the oldest of the girls. And Angie and Deborah. Right. So you're, so you're the, as the oldest, you actually raise everybody. You know, that's, a, that's the same. I have a in baby city. Yeah. A PhD. A PhD, yeah. <laughs> a PhD, you're right. Yeah. Was it Pampers Diapers degree? <laughs> yep. So. 
<laughs> That's good. I like that. Yeah, I'm going to use that. <laughs> All right. Feel free to use it. <laughs> Um, so I, I could talk to you all day, but I know you're very busy and, um, it was just wonderful, uh, talking to you for this, this time. And I thank you so much, uh, for you're spending welcome, time man. talking to me. Stuff. I have a band called David Winans Pie. P.I. is in 3.14. Okay. So it's David Winans Pie. Do you have, um, uh, like Twitter and, and all I those social media Spotify. platforms? I I uh, what is the other thing? Apple Music. Mm -hmm. And I have a page, Facebook Reverb Nation page, David Wine and Spy, which has songs on it. Okay. Um, and finishing up this last, this album, which seems forever, called Psalms. Okay. And that's about it. I'm right now in a studio in Detroit at the disc working with a gentleman by the name of Maruga Booker. Oh, wow. Okay. And we're mastering his, the release of a single called it might be funk to you, but it sure is the gospel to me. Okay. I like that title. <laughs> <laughs> well, look I, for it on all your digital platforms, as they say. Absolutely. We will certainly do that. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear. And you have a blessed one. I told you that was going to be a great interview. He has such amazing stories. I'm looking forward to his book. But until the book comes out, why don't you take a listen to his group, David Winans Pie. Check him out. And until I talk to you next time, peace. Let my heart be still for a moment and reflect where it has been. Looking back in retrospect, where should I begin? I shied away from circumstance, whose love will I depend? If there's such a thing as second chance, will you bring me there again? You can check us out at mjallday.thepodcast on Facebook and mjallday-thepodcast on Twitter. You can also email me at dthevip at gmail.com. That's d-t-h-e-v-i-p at gmail.com. And tell me all of your MJ stories. Beneath the Eiffel Tower, in Ghana's Black Star Square, in Johannesburg, and in Pittsburgh, in Birmingham, Alabama, and Birmingham, England. We are missing Michael, but we do know that we had him. And we, we are the world.